us praise God amen father thank you for your word this morning we thank you for illumination that comes from your word we thank you for illumination that comes from your word father thank you and thank you again in Jesus mighty name we pray let's turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 in verse 10 Ecclesiastes chapter 10 in verse 10 Ecclesiastes chapter 10 in verse 10 and I'm continuing my teaching about in Christ reality some people call it new creation reality some people call it so great salvation or riches of salvation all the same concept in Christ reality in Christ realities in Christ realities hallelujah in Christ realities everybody say I'm a new creature all things have passed away behold all things have become new I'm forgiven I am redeemed, I am loved, I am blessed, unconditionally blessed, unconditionally loved by the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare victory is my portion, health is my portion, life is my portion. I'm making significant progress. All things are possible unto me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can raise the capital. I can grow the business I can get married I can get the appointment I can get the approval I can do everything that is in my destiny I'm not afraid because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world watch out for me praise God oh somebody shout hallelujah Praise God. Watch out for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 in verse 10. This is a very powerful speech, scripture that speaks about wisdom. And it says this. It says, if the iron be... Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. He said, don't pull back, says the Spirit of God. He said, many of you, you're feeling a nudge to stretch and expand and there's a tendency for you to pull back he said but i'm challenging and stretching you because i put the potential there and i know that you can and the spirit of god is saying to you that this is the time to stretch out and you will see the glory says the holy spirit hallelujah glory to god hallelujah i didn't see that coming amen Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And if the iron be blunt, and it doeth not wedge it, wedge the edge. So this is about like a knife. It says if you're using a knife, and you don't, what they call it, you don't sharpen the knife. What will happen is this. You will need to put more strength. You will need to put what? More strength. It said, but wisdom is what? profitable to the right so when you find yourself exerting a lot of energy to cut and you're exerting a lot of energy to cut and you don't take time and sharpen the knife you'll find yourself exerting so much energy so much energy but it says for well, wisdom is profitable to what to direct so this is what i'm saying most of the time and i want to see this most of the time you see someone really frustrated and working hard on something and they're working hard on something and they're working hard on something and they're working really really hard on it and it's not working out and i want to say this here as we start most times for christians the gap in manifestation is because of a gap in revelation most of the time as christian the gap in manifestation so when i'm not seeing something that i really praying for that I really desire most of the time it's a gap in revelation so see what it says it says instead of you stressing out and pushing a lot go ahead and sharpen yourself or go and get what revelation so a gap most of the time the gap in manifestation is a gap in what revelation let me say this quickly here I don't know if I've said this in this service if the devil was not a factor some people still will not succeed in life and the reason why is that there are principles, there are laws, there are things you have to do to get to where you want to be. That even if the devil is not a factor, you still will not do it. The reason why is that number one, you do not know. So basically you violate principles, you just violate things, you just mess things around. And I'm saying so because sometimes 
we want to be clever and dump all of the failure on Satan. But I wish I could accept that, but it's not true. Sometimes you want to succeed in business and what is holding you back is not, it is not the devil. It's just pure ignorance. You just don't know how to market. You just don't know how to market. You don't know about marketing. Sometimes you want to raise money and you say, I'm binding the devil. But it's not the devil holding you back from getting the funds. The fact that you want to raise this money but you don't have your financial books in place. And you need to be honest with yourself that, hey, I need to get my things together and stop blaming the devil for what he did not do. I know the devil has done some things, but there are lots of things that the devil did not do. Glory to God. So back to our conversation. So, the, so I'm saying this because if there's a gap in manifestation, it's because there's often a gap in what? Revelation. Unfortunately, most Christians don't want to sit down and find out what the word of God has said to you know step by step and let me say this uh, revelation is like keys it's like keys and if there's a gap in manifestation let me talk about gap in manifestation some people are doing so well but the area they're struggling is their health and the reason why they start deficiency in their health is because there is what a gap in revelation some people you know their career is doing well they are making money but when it comes to marriage they cannot do well They've just not been able to choose who to marry. But if they're married, they just can't have a very happy marriage. And the reason why is that if there's a gap in that revelation, in that place, is a gap in revelation. I, I will give a story from Kate Moore. Kate Moore walked with Brother Kenny Hagen, you know, legend of faith. And Kate Moore was saying a story about himself. He said he noticed that when he has health problems, he knows how to believe God for healing. He will get healed. His family has falls sick and all of those things. He said, but he noticed also that when he had financial problem, he will use his faith and declare the word of God and pray. The same way he will use his faith for healing, but it will never have a miracle. Or it will have a miracle, but it was always a tussle. So after doing this for about 20 years, he went to God in prayer and said, what is the problem, Lord? I noticed when it comes to healing, you know, you know, when it comes to healing, things are very well with me. But when it comes to finances, it's not very. And God told him, he said, remember when Brother Higgins was alive? For 20 or 30 years, you served with him. You were in all the healing services and healing classes where he taught about healing for literally 20 years plus. He said, what happened to you that in those phases of your life, you built up your faith and unduced your faith in that area. But when it came to provision, you have not exercised your faith like that. So your faith is weak in that area. Meaning something very significant. Although you have the key to the sitting room, the key to the sitting room cannot open to the key to what? To your living room. You know, why am I saying this? You might be very strong when it comes to dominion. You might be very small, strong when it comes to uh, when it comes to prayer, but when it comes to righteous living, you just are weak. And the reason why is that there's a gap in revelation. So you see people, you see people. You know, they have faith for finances. Finance is no problem at all. They, you know, marriage is no problem at all. But when it comes to their health, they are weak in their health. And that gap in their health is because of a gap in what? Revelation. You will see people, you will see people, you know, they love to come to church. They are doing well, but they have nicotine addiction. They have pornographic addiction. They just find themselves stopping from one sexual relationship to another sexual relationship. And the reason why even they don't want to do it is because of a gap in revelation. So every time there's a gap in manifestation, either it's an addiction problem or it's a sickness or it's a childbirth problem the reason why is that there's a gap in what revelation someone say gap in revelation the reason i'm saying so to you is that as a child of god you must learn to value the word you must learn the answer is always in the book praise god the answer is always in the book so if there's a gap in manifestation if there's an area where you and i'm saying that because you know let's just be plain honest sometimes i come across people one time one lady was saying to me say pastor Walaji, when it comes to getting job getting funding doing business you know I, things you know when it comes to getting job getting money doing business you know i'm always at it but this marriage thing he says, I'm always struggling. I'm always shooting the wrong man or all those kind of things. And you know what, what, what I said to her is this. I said to her, the reason why that happened is what there's a 
gap in what? There's a gap in knowledge. And how do you get knowledge? The Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He said, faith coming by hearing, by hearing by the word of Christ. The third thing is this. He says this, by knowledge shall the righteous be justified. So every time there's a gap, maybe there's a gap in your business, maybe there's a gap somewhere, what you have to go for is to go for the gap in knowledge. You have to fill the gap in revelation. You cannot receive what you do not know. That's why in Acts chapter 18, the Bible says this, and this is very powerful. The Bible says Paul came across certain disciples and asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said that we have not yet heard whether there be any what Holy Ghost. And because they had not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost, they could not receive it because you cannot receive what you do not know. What am I saying to you? If you find that there's a gap in a certain area, that gap is where you want to invest in Bible study, in building your faith, in building your faith because that gap can be changed. It can be filled. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. There is no mountain anywhere. Every man's mountain is ignorance. There is no mountain anywhere. Every man's mountain is what is ignorance. So everything you call a mountain is because of something you do not know. Everything. I've seen people that were diabetic and they got the word of God and walked out of the habitus. I've seen people that had cancer and got the word of God and walked out of cancer. I've seen people that had childbirth problems. If I just this week, I was talking to one of our leaders and they, they've been married for about eight years and now they have a baby. I've seen people that had didn't have a baby and they walked out of it and the reason why they could walk out of it there was a revelation of God's word they began to stumble upon and that's why it's important for you to have a revelation on God's word let me turn to Philippians chapter Philemon rather Philemon verse 6 Philemon verse 6 there are two conditions essential for your faith to manifest there are two conditions essential for your faith to manifest see what it says here it says the communication of your faith may become what effectual it says when it says effectual, it's effective. Effective means produce results. He says, your faith will produce results. How does your faith produce results? He says, by what? Acknowledging of every good thing, which is what? Inside of you. So there are two conditions for your faith to produce results. The first one is knowledge. The reason why knowledge is this. You cannot acknowledge what you do not know. So he says that the way your faith produces results is by what? First of all, having knowledge. And the second one is by acknowledging what you know. When you acknowledge something, it's not when you have it. You could have had something before, and I'll give a good example. Let me give a good example. You know, someone is here in church, and I want to acknowledge her. You know, so I'm going to, hey, give, um, um, praise the Lord. Church, can we just acknowledge the presence of Chantel this morning? Chantel, can we just, yeah, let's acknowledge your presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just want to acknowledge your presence. Oh, wow. Welcome in Jesus' name. Please have your seat. Question, was, was it when I acknowledged that she got to church? Was she in church before? So, you, the fact that you're acknowledging did not mean that was when you got it. But the fact that you're acknowledging it, when you acknowledge is when you allow that person, that thing to take what? Preeminence. So, he says the way your faith works is by acknowledging. So, before I acknowledge, the first thing is that I know and I acknowledge. So, glory to God. I said 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 glory to God. This is very powerful. So, this kingdom is voice activated. You know, let me explain what I mean. If I pick up my phone right now, if I look at my phone, my phone turns on. The reason why is that, you know, once I look at my phone, because it's facial recognition. So as soon as I look at my phone, all my apps start working because it's facial recognition system. Some of you have a thumbprint system that activates your phone. All the apps start working once you look at it. Your WhatsApp start working. Your pictures start working once you look at it. The way your phone works is by a facial recognition system. The kingdom of God also has a system the kingdom of god works by voice the kingdom of god is voice activated you only see what you say praise god in this kingdom you only see what you say this kingdom is voice activated your phone is face activated his fingerprint activated but god's kingdom is what voice activated you only see what you say let me give you some scripture psalm 103 verse 2 glory to god let's run now psalm 103 verse 2 this kingdom is voice activated psalm 107 verse 2 rather not 103 psalm 107 verse 2 psalm 107 verse 2 glory to god this kingdom is voice activated glory to god hallelujah psalm 107 verse 2 it says let's read together i want to go he said let the redeemed of the lord what 
you know, when, when music ministry wants to do some funny things, they will say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say so. So you will think that what they are saying is that the scriptures say, say what? S-O, so nonsense. What the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so means, let the redeemed of the Lord say, I am redeemed. It's not so. The redeemed, the reason why is that this kingdom is voice activated. If they are redeemed, it's not enough to be redeemed. They must confess with their mouth that I am redeemed. So it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So because I'm redeemed, I can declare, I've been redeemed from untimely death. I've been redeemed from cancer. I've been redeemed from curses. I've been redeemed from Praise God. Have a redeemed from evil. Have a redeemed from darkness. That's what he says. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know why? This kingdom is voice activated. So it's not enough to have stuff in Christ. What you have in Christ must be vocalized. Let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, you need to be talking every day. Jesus Christ spoke to the tree and the tree obeyed. Jesus Christ spoke to the stump and the stump obeyed. Jesus spoke to the fish and the fish obeyed. Listen to me. It's time to wake up and look at your checkbook and speak to it. It's time to speak to your bank account. It's time to speak to your transaction. It's time to speak to your womb. It's time to speak to your job. It's time to speak to your approval. Why? Life and that are in the power of the tongue. It's time to talk. You know what I say? I say this, a short mouth is a short destiny. Praise God. Parents, when your children are going to school, grab their hands and lay hands and say, you will do well. You will walk in righteousness. Lay hands and speak over them. Didn't you read about Jacob when he was about to die? He said, line up on my sons and I will tell them what their future will be. The reason why is that we belong to a speaking kingdom. Oh, glory to God. And I'm saying so because some of you are not talking intentionally. You're not talking intentionally. What do you say? Things are so tough. My life is so hard. The cliche you say is I'm depressed. That's the cliche. I'm depressed. I'm finished. How can I be finished? How can I be finished? Don't you know who I am? Christ in me is the hope of glory. There's, there's no good man to marry me. Hey, hey! Praise God. What should you say when all that says there's a casting now? I declare there's a lifting up. Are, are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? So watch this now. The way faith, well, Philemon verse 6, he says, our faith produces result by the acknowledging. So number one, we must know what we have. And the second thing is what? To acknowledge, which is what? Verbalize what we have. One of the things we'll do starting now is that all of you are going to get out your little calculation again and start reading it morning and evening. Why? The acknowledging. Of every good thing on the inside of you. What you have today is what you said yesterday. What you have tomorrow is what you said today. You have not because you said not. Glory to God. You need to start saying things like, you know, saying that everything, all things are working together for me. You need to start saying things like that. You know. Let me tell you the practical thing. See, let me tell you something. Right? All of you in business, you will have time. You will have time. You just, just set your time on your clock. I have time. I do certain things. I set them a time. And you have time. You just bring it out. Lord, I thank you because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The biggest transaction in the industry are coming to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me, women, instead of nagging your husband and tying wrapper and shutting the door and making yourself depressed, you will get up. You will say, in the name of the Lord, my husband walks in the path of righteousness. You start speaking righteousness. You say, my husband walks in the path of righteousness. My marriage is beautiful. My marriage is full of love. My marriage is healthy. I'm healthy every time I'm depressed. When would you say that you're full of joy? Have you noticed all the time you said you're depressed? What happened to you? You got more depressed. Let's, let me show you this quickly. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Oh, this, this, will, this will bless you. 13 verse 5. I said this kingdom is a speaking kingdom. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Are you ready? 
He says, and let your conversation be with what? With a covetousness. And this is very, this very, this is very important. Some of you, hey, 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 hey. If you're sad, you need to know this. You're just the one making yourself sad because you keep comparing yourself. A lot of people that are sad are making themselves sad because they keep comparing themselves. And listen to me, we may be age made, but our timing is different. Life is in phases and men are in sizes. The fact that we're age made does not mean we're in the same phase of life. I need to know that my pace is different. You need to realize something. Life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And you just need to be patient with yourself. Just be patient with yourself. Some of you are too much in a hurry. You are so much in a hurry, you want to jump out of the will of God. As a matter of fact, the reason why some of you have destroyed long-term relationship was because there was no short-term gain. And some relationships are not short-term gain. They are relationships that grows for a long time. You must realize that there are relationships that grows for a long time. Be patient with it. Relationship that two or three months, uh, you know, um, you know, this and this and this. I, I, I thought when I joined the church, now I'll find a husband. Two months you've left. It's a marathon. Ah, you know, I, I was close to him. He could not even give me a contract. Three months you've left. Now that man gets into a higher position, but you're no longer there. Because when a generation that is love quick fix, if you were Joseph's friend, you would have thought Joseph was a failure because you didn't have insight and foresight to realize that it's not a sprint it's a marathon you will have thought things were going worse for joseph because he moved from being the best son to being sold as a slave he moved from potiphar's house then from potiphar's house he moved to the prison you'll have said joseph ah a cause is following you you didn't realize that sometimes the pit is a connection place for the palace and that's why when you're in the pit be careful how you treat people there may be the recommendations you need for the palace and men that have money, be careful how you treat your wife. Because the truth is that one day, one day, you will surely need her. Because you think you don't need her right now, but one day you will. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So let's keep reading. He said, let your conversation be with what? Without covetousness. And be content with such things as what? As you have. For he... Now, this is God. For what did God say? For God said, I will what? I will never leave you nor forsake it. Did God say that? So why did God say that? Verse 6. See why God said that. Verse 6. So, read one to go. So that what? Watch, 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 watch. The reason why God said was so that we can say. Because although God is your helper, if you don't say it, you can't get help. So he says, the reason why God said is that so that we can say. So the reason why God says something is for me to be able to say. He said, the reason why God, I will say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. is that so that I may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man will do to me. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Uh, that, that, hallelujah, I said, glory to God. He said, I may boldly say, I may boldly say, I may boldly say. So the reason why God says is because God is giving me words to say. Because this kingdom is what? His voice activated. So when the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd, why is he telling me that? So that I can say, I shall not want. Praise God. So when the doctor say you don't have sperm to have a child, he said, doctor, you don't understand. The Lord is my shepherd. He that is sperm or is money, I shall not want. The Lord supplies everything full. If Toyota, Kia, Lexus can have spare part, what about God? Don't you know that he knows something can go wrong and he can create spare part for you? Glory to God. So the first way to get your faith work is to know what you have and to what acknowledge it. No, Obina, come. Please come. You know, yeah, please come. A and come with passports. Thank you. Hallelujah. That you may, you may boldly say. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's read this. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's read this. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Oh, wow. Are you getting blessed? Are you getting blessed? 
See, let's go to verse 16 now. Verse 16. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. This scripture just <sighs> provokes me spiritually. See, this is Paul praying. This is a Holy Ghost prayer. Paul says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17. What's the prayer? It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Okay, he was saying that this thing has to be revealed to you. Okay. Verse 18. Verse 18. Verse 18 says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. He says that these things, your eyes, you, 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 you can't get it with your head. Your eyes needs to be enlightened. He says that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That now, guess what he said? Why? That you may what? Know. Know what? The, uh, this is what you need to know. It says, number one, what is what? The hope of his calling. That is your purpose in Christ. Then two, what is now? What is what? The riches. Hold on. Take it easy. He said, the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Where? In heaven? In heaven? Come on, I can't hear you. In heaven? He said there is, oh wow, he said there's riches of the glory of his inheritance in the same. Brothers and sisters, I'm glad to announce to you that I'm loaded. I'm loaded to the teeth because of the riches of the glory of his inheritance is me. Praise God. Listen to me. If you look at me as ordinary to your disadvantage, I am loaded to the teeth. Look at him and say, I'm loaded to the teeth. He said the riches of the glory of his inheritance in what in the saints look at the next verse that's not all that is in there and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who was believe that means that there's power inside me some of you are still saying send down power holy ghost power. send down power here no sir if i have the holy ghost i have power if i have the holy ghost i have power I have the Holy Ghost. I have someone say, I'm full of power. Say, I'm full of power. I can cause changes. I'm full of power. I can cause changes. I'm full of power. I can cause changes. Hey, somebody say, Hallelujah. That's the problem. Because any small thing, I'm powerless. Don't you have the Holy Ghost? I'm full of power. I can cause changes. He says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards those who believe according to the working of his power, his mighty power, continue please, where is it? That he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him out at his own right hand in heavenly places. If you keep going down, the Bible says that power is in us. Praise God. So how, what, for me to acknowledge, I need to know what I have. So guess what now? Um, where's your wife? Suleme, are you there? Come, please. Give them a microphone. So, what does in Christ mean? When you say in Christ realities, in Christ realities means that the realities because of our union with Christ. Amen. In Christ means in union with Christ. So, these are the realities because of what? I'm what? I mean what? Say, I'm in union with Christ. Let me tap and say, I'm in union with Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let me. Him. Wow. Is this your ring? Is this your ring? Let, let's see. Let, oh, wow. That's a big diamond right there. That's it. Yeah, give me, give me, give me Respond. You just tell me. Is that a big diamond right? That's a big rock. Yes or no? Why are you holding your husband? He's not going away. No, oh, that's a big rock right there. What do you think? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's yours, right? No, use the microphone. It's yours? It is. It's yours, right? Did you hear? You, yes, you? it's mine. Yeah, you, we need to hold it, hold it closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's mine. Oh, the ring is yours. How much did you buy it? No, I don't know. Oh, wow. How could it be yours, but you didn't buy it? Because he bought it. Because of their union, what is his belongs to her. As a matter of fact, I don't know who bought the house. I don't know who bought the cars. But if I ask her, how many cars do you have? How many cars? <laughs> oh my God, that's a challenging question. Let's say four cars. Yeah, let's say four cars. Just say four. <laughs> that's the right number. Don't lie in church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just say four. Yeah. A couple of cars. No, no, I'm not asking you. I'm asking her. Yeah, yeah, tell me. 
Four is a good number. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, just say four. Don't, don't make this a call for the whole church looking at you now. Yeah, say four, yeah. Okay, four. Four, yeah, exactly. When you say four cars, in the thinking, I want to ask her, how many did you buy? She'll probably tell you, maybe none. Maybe one. But how do you have four cars? If he bought it, it belongs to us. Because we're in what? In union. So when we say we have inheritance in Christ, I didn't do anything but my husband, Jesus, did it. And because of what he did, I have something. Oh, glory to God. When Jesus died and rose from the dead and defeated the devil, that victory was on my side. So if I say I defeat the devil, it's because I'm in union with Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. The ring she's wearing, she doesn't even know the price. The reason why is that she's a union. Even the ring came by the union. Praise God. I said praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Even the ring she's wearing, she doesn't know the price. Because she has it in him. She got it in him. As long as he linked up with Obina, Obina came with the ring. Once I came into Christ, some things come with me. Once I came into Christ, some things come with Christ. That's what he referred to as the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me. Praise God. Praise God. You can give Obina the microphone. I can release you right now. Thank you. You've done the job. Yeah, you, you can go. That's fine. You can come, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hold your American passport. I hold Nigerian passport. I want to ask you a question. Can we go to the same places with this passport? Depends where we're going. Yeah, let's say Europe. Depends where in Europe. Yeah. Let's say Netherlands. I can go. What happens to me? You can apply for a visa. Uh, but you don't need a visa. I need a visa. His reality is different from my reality. He can get loans at 2% from the bank. I can maybe never get a loan. And if I get a loan, I'm going to pay like 40%. Why? Because my passport determines what? My reality. So, because he has a blue passport, you know, if you don't have um, if you don't have money to pay hospital bills, can you go to the hospital? Yes. What do you think about my passport? Can I go to the hospital? You can go. Yeah. But they might not attend to you. Yeah. But you can go. <laughs> what do you think they will, if I go to Evercare? What do you think they would do to me if I don't have money to pay? You can sit down on the sea. Yeah. And they can send me back home. Most likely. Praise God. But if you go to any hospital in Baltimore and you don't have money, what would they do? Obamacare. Obamacare. The reason why is that because of his passport. Watch this now. If for any reason my passport changes from this green passport to a blue passport, what happens? My reality what? Changes. When I was born naturally, I had a natural human passport. It's called human passport. But when I came into Christ, I was given what a new creature's passport. Praise God. So my reality has changed because my passport has changed. Stop judging me based on my old passport. I have a new passport. Stop judging me based on my old passport. I have a new passport. This is what the Bible means when it says, if any man be in Christ, one passport is God. All things are passed away. Behold. <laughs> Behold. I got a new passport. All things have become new. If you believe, shout amen. amen. This passport you queue for six months to get a visa. This passport visa free. Everywhere you go, just enter. This passport, if you have this passport, sometimes you get good treatment, sometimes you don't get good treatment. But if you have this passport, this passport is VIP treatment. This is a natural human passport. It's just there. But this is your new creation passport. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Ask your neighbor, what passport do you carry?
You know what I'm saying so? The reason I'm saying so is this what I'm saying so. Glory to God. The passport to carry determines your reality. So when we say in Christ's reality, we're saying the realities of my new position in Christ. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. One of my new realities, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Let's look at some. Colossians 1 13. Colossians 1 13. Colossians 1 13. So I need to check this my new passport. What can it do? Because you know, I must be careful lest I begin to behave like my old passport. My new passport, what can it do? Are you ready? Let's read one to go. Who had what? He says, Who is going to deliver us? Yes or no? Are you going to be delivered? He says, Who had delivered us? They, they, they say, they say, they, they look at they say, hey, yeah, you have spirit husband. You, spirit husband, from where? When I'm married to Christ. Who is the side chick? Who is the side chick? If I'm married to Christ, so spirit husband is side chick. They say, no, 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 before you got born again, that you had the spirit husband before. Okay, so I'm married to spirit husband. So Jesus is the side chick. Are you insane? Jesus is cheating. Praise God. Once I came into Christ, the one that had his side chick died. He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. He says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness? He says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness? He didn't just stop there. In verse 13, he has translated us. He didn't just deliver us. He says, in case you don't know, you have been moved into the kingdom of his yes son. Is it, uh, Ochoko, all the firstborn in your house, they, some normally follow them. He said, not me. He said, but we need to go and wash your head in the river. I said, me. He said, not me. Why? I know I have a new passport. I'm in him. In him have been delivered. In him have been delivered. In him have been delivered. Listen to me. In Christ, you have it. What do you not need to do? You not need to what? Acknowledge it. The reason why it has not showed up is because you are not acknowledging. They've taken you to all this mountain for prayer. Nothing has changed. It's time to acknowledge it. What will you do when you wake up in the morning? You will say, I've been delivered. Praise God. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been translated into the kingdom of his son. Someone say hallelujah. They say, hey. someone say, hey, you, you, in this I will show you. I will show you, you, you will see, you, if I, you say, ma, please show me. <laughs> ah, ah, they, they didn't see it coming, praise God. He said, show me. The reason why is that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. You will say, ma, please show me. But if you love yourself, don't try it. Why? I've been delivered. See, I've been delivered. They can't touch me. With this new passport, I'm superior to Satan. Are, are you hearing me? I, I'm superior to Satan. Oh, glory to God. At least we're trying to read something. Ephesians 1 verse 20. I'm superior to Satan. Glory to God. Someone say, I'm delivered. From curses. I want to ask you, are you cursed? See, that's why they use you to use... That's why church normally uses people to do to do to collect money you will not say hey ya hmm. Hmm. hey they are following you i say yes yes he said pastor i know they are following me because my mother did they, they, they will tell you story they don't say in fact your name is ochuko he said did you know your name before yeah. someone said your name is ochuko you didn't know your name was ochuko before so that's the impression if someone wants to tell you prophecy tell me what currency to invest in tell me what crypto to buy ah tell me real prophecy Say, buy this cell by this time. If I make one million dollars, I will come back and do Thanksgiving. Say, your name, your name is Ochuko. Say, hmm. My name is Ochuko. Chu, 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 chu. You're already shaking. Shake off religiosity. Don't become food for false prophets. They say, come and buy soap. They say, come and buy water. They say, come and buy leaf. And you're buying. Praise God. I say, praise God. 
when you have a baby, you will now put you will now put cross on the baby's neck and open Bible Psalm 91. He said, Why this Bible? He said, the, the Bible, the Bible sends away evil spirits. Do you have intelligence? You mean you mean paper can send away evil spirits. The person that printed it was if a born again Christian. So the people that the person you bought the Bible for was not demon possessed himself. The paper sent the evil spirit away. With all the in Asurok, how many evil spirits have been sent out? All hotels have paper, Bible. With the Bible there, people fornicate the there. It has not sent evil spirit away. Every hotel you see Gideon Bible. Gideon, you will not even see Quran, you will see Gideon Bible. Gideon Bible, Gideon Bible. With the Bible there, people will fornicate. It has not sent evil spirit away. It's not from your child because you don't know who you are. Praise God. See what it says. Are you ready? He says, I've been delivered. So when Mama say, hey, we have to come and do something in Arochuku, he said, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I know we are siblings, but I moved. <laughs> hey, yeah, my passport changed. I, you can go, but I have been delivered. Glory to God. Are you here? I can hear you. Are you here at the back? If you're here, say amen. See what the Bible says. Which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead. When he raised him, did he raise him or he raised us? Raised us. When he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in heavenly places. Keep going. Verse 21. That far above principalities, powers, and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come. Verse 22. Oh, glory to God. And has put everything under his feet and given it to be the head, all things to the church. He says, when he sat I, and I said, church, I did this for you. You didn't notice it, principalities, powers, dominion and might. Witches and wizards were too small to be in the list. When he said there's witch, he said, I deal with your seniors. Go and call them. Praise God. He said, I deal with your seniors. Go and call them. No, no. Did you see Harper is there? Did you see Marine Spirit there? They were too low in the hierarchy. So he told us who we are dealing with. He says, he has put us above, go to verse 21, above principalities and powers, might and dominion. Those are the ones that the Habalist is consulting. He says, you are now above them. Yeah. Nepa takes light. Oh, oh, what are you afraid of? In darkness, I'm a king. Kapatabayagade. Yeah. Liboranda, Katebaya, Zakupa Ratemana Yagada. Don't you know who I am? I'm a child of God. I have God's life in my spirit. If I say it, it's like that. Peter says we are partakers of the divine nature. I, I can't even get into that today. He said we are partakers of the divine nature, meaning that the God life is now in us. The reason we can command and it's like that is because we have the God life. He said you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. If business is not doing well, you will get up. You will get up. Before anybody comes to the store, go to your store, open the store. You will just say, Raga, Lego, Para, Sila. Clients start coming. They'll say, how does it work? Power is in our mouth. Power is in our mouth. Power is in our mouth. You are going for interview. You are shaky. You say, I'm coming. Go to the toilet. Hey, you are feeling shy. You are feeling fear. You say, that's not the spirit of God. You begin to pray. One more boldness. The Bible says, stir up the gift of God. You will say, Bragade kaposh. Emporamanakaya. As you pray, boldness will come. And you come out. You say, I'm ready now. <laughs> they say, what happened? Boldness has been stirred up. Every birthday. <laughs> this birthday, I'm not married again. He says, have you forgotten me, oh God? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. He said, he has given us the spirit of joy. He said, with joy, we draw water out of the well of salvation. He will say, Father, I thank you because all things are working together for my good. 
You are not late, you're on time. He's working for my marriage. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Being confident of this very thing. He that's begun the good thing, he will perfect it. The Bible says the Lord will perfect all that concern me. Shout amen. Stand on your feet, let us pray. Let Pato Kabbalah lift up your hands and pray. Oh, glory to God. Declare who you are in Christ. 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 When others say there's a casting down, I say there's a lifting up. I'm a new creation. All things are passed away. I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm forgiven. There's no condemnation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a king priest. Praise God. I'm reigning in life. I'm reigning in life. I'm reigning in life. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. I'm not an echo. I'm a voice. I'm not an echo. I'm a voice. I'm not an echo. I'm a voice. All things are possible unto me. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, all things are possible unto me. Because I'm a child of God. Say Christ in me. He's the hope of glory. Say my life is forward and upward. Backward never. Forward ever. Backward never. Forward ever. In the name of Jesus. Say I have victory. Every day of my life. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While you're standing, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. If you're not born again, I would love to lead you to Christ. Because that's where it starts. Anywhere you are, raise up your hand. If you're not born again, I would love to pray for you today. Say this prayer after me. God bless you. Thank you for doing that. All of all that are standing. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word today. I believe that Jesus Christ died, was raised from the death of my justification. I confess with my mouth today, in Jesus' mighty name.